Hello, this is Alex Moreno and I am Developer Advocate here at Pantheon. Today, I am very excited to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, which is the couple in Drupal, or what we call as front-end sites here in Pantheon. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a new Next.js front-end that pulls content from a headless Drupal instance. We will see how it looks like for content editors to update their posts in this architecture. And let me tell you now, it is very easy. We use server-side rendering, which results in no lag between publishing in Drupal and seeing the changes in your Decopa application in the other side on production. I will make as well a front-end change in my next year's codebase via a GitHub pull request, and we are even going to see the changes in an environment before we even merge that pull request, which I think is an incredible feature on our platform. And of course, we will look at the high-level architecture. But let's jump over to the Pantheon dashboard and see how this works. Here I can see a list of all my sites. There is a new section called Frontend Sites, which is where your new frontend sites will appear when you create one. This is on early access at the moment of recording this video, so not all customers will see this, but if you want to try this by yourself, follow the link in the description and get access to the Pantheon Decoupled solution. Okay, let's go and create a new site. We are going to do it the way you would normally create a new Drupal site on Pantheon, but now you will see that there is a new section. This new section is for front-end sites. We currently have uh, started starter kits for uh, Next.js with Drupal and WordPress, as well as Gatsby and Next.js with WordPress. If you are using Gatsby, our platform by default uses a static site rendering to deliver the front-end site while your Next.js site will use Node.js to uh, do the server site rendering. In this case, we are going to uh, we are looking at server side rendering with Next.js and Drupal. So I'm going to click on uh, that button and trigger the new site creation process. Now, the first thing that needs to happen, if it's the, the first time that you arrive here, which is not my case, is to connect the GitHub account. I select that and then choose to continue. The reason we select an account is that this process takes our GitHub user and generates a new repository inside our account that actually contains the code base, not just ready to deploy in the platform, but also even ready to be installed in your local machine. I'm going to select the organization for that repo. And next, I need to choose which CMS our next ES application will link to. The CMS uh, backend needs uh, to already exist. So I'm going to use the one that I have built already and I'm going to link it to my front-end site, to my new front-end site. When I hit continue, that kicks off the build process. That takes five minutes or so to run. So all the containers are spun up and everything is configured together when uh, the process finishes, just like magic. Now, while we wait for our site to be built, let's have a look at the publishing process. Your editors or your editorial team, depending on the size of your teams, will want to modify their contents without having to ask developers to trigger a new build every time they make a change, right? Uh, or even having to wait dozens of minutes to see those changes in production. Editors will work using the Drupal backend, as you will be doing if you were working with a normal Drupal site, which is in a way what what we are still doing. Okay, this is where post has been pulled from. Drupal is exposing all this data using native JSON. We have this article, but I'm gonna change the title and uh, make a few ma minor changes in the body as well, so we can appreciate the changes. Let's make those changes. But uh, wait a minute, uh, your editorial is going to ask you um, I don't want to go to production without looking at how those changes will look like. Uh, well, fear not. Here at Pantheon, we are committed to ensure that you don't have to reinvent the wheel, the wheel and we have built a preview functionality for your decoupled sites. Let's have a look. We are going to click on preview. I will select uh, which site we want to see those changes and click again. And there you go. 
Now we can see the changes that we are going to publish, review them, compare, and at the moment we are happy with the, the preview. We can come back to edit and then decide if we need any more changes or actually publish, as I'm going to do right now. Um, and now you will see the advantage of using Next.js and server-side rendering. Instead of needing to wait for our build, Node.js is being able to... It's going to do it in a second. Uh, quickly re-render just the content that was edited. I will go now to our, our production site, refresh, and boom, site updated. In the end, what I'm talking is about having all the advantages, advantages of a decoupled site with all the convenience and easy of a normal Drupal site. Now, let's go back to the dashboard. We have seen how to change content in our Next.js application, but how will a developer make and publish a change, in this case, a code change? Well, let's do a simulation. Let's imagine that I am doing a change from my local and I'm pushing this as a pull request. I'll be uh, using GitHub editing, but the outcome will be the same, a shiny new pull request. Let's make a small change, for example, a title that is going to uh, be very obvious. Let's open the pull request, as I said, and now let's head to our dashboard again, where we can see that our PR has kicked a new uh, build process. While we wait for our pull request to finish, let's have a look at the high architecture diagram of everything that we are talking here. Before recording this video, I created a fresh Drupal site. For more than a decade, we've been doing some pretty cool stuff with containers and other technology on the CMS arena, but all of this is simplified on this diagram. For our purposes here, let's not worry too much about the Drupal side of things. On the front-end sites, uh, we are doing either server-side rendering with a Node.js container, or we are just putting a static site onto storage. On both cases, our front-end site sits behind a CDN. And in either case, the front-end site's code travels from a GitHub repository to a build process to then either uh, the container or the static side of things. For our next CS site here, we are doing the dynamic path with a container. Finally, let's go back to our dashboard where we can see that the build has finished. And what we can see now is that we have a new link with a very descriptive name of the pull request that we have opened. If I click on this link, what I'm going to see is that I have a version of my code on set pull request, completely functional on that new multi-dev or temporary environment. And as I said, there is no need to even go to the for a stage to check if your code is working and the way that you, you will be expecting. And we can even share that link to QA, to colleagues, to stakeholders, to take progress on your project. Let's go back to the site we were trying to create. We can see that uh, we have a new dashboard for our front-end site. Here, we have the link to the newly created site. Let's click on it. And as you can see, we have a shiny new Next.js version of the content in the Drupal site that I specify while building it. There are many more features on this dashboard, but I'm going to let you explore or wait for the next videos about our decoupled solution. I hope you enjoyed the demo. If you are interested in decoupled or what we call front-end sites in Pantheon, we would love you to come and give it a try. See if Pantheon is right for your next headless Drupal site. And let us know about your project using the link below. Thank you.